السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. To carry on with the head and neck lectures, I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the anatomy of the trichopalatine fossa and its contents. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor of anatomy at Mansoura University, Egypt. So in the first part of this presentation, I'm gonna talk about the pony features of the trichopalatine fossa regarding its walls, connections, and contents. And then, in a coming video, I'm going to talk about the nerves that lies there, namely the maxillary nerve, its origin, course, branches, and also the trigopalatine ganglion, which is the largest autonomic ganglia in the head and neck. And then, in the last part of the presentation, I will talk about the vessels uh, which lie in the trigopalatine fossa, namely the maxillary artery and the trigoid plexus of veins. Let's first start with the anatomy of the trigopalatine fossa. To start with the anatomy of the trigopalatine fossa, let's take a cross section at this level of the normal lateralis. We can see here the nose, the maxilla, the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic arch. This is the mandible. You know deep to the zygomatic arch lies in this region, deep to the mandible, the infratemporal fossa. Okay, so if we look at this CT picture of the um, cross section of the skull at the level of the zygomatic arch, this so this is the zygomatic arch, this is the zygomatic bone, this is the maxilla containing the maxillary ear sinus, and this is the nasal cavity. So deep to the zygomatic arch, we can see this space here, which is the infratemporal fossa, where the RO lies here. Deep to the infratemporal fossa, there is another cavity which lies deep to it. This is the trigopalatine fossa. And there is a door leading to the trigopalatine fossa from the infratemporal fossa. This door or this fissure is called the trigomaxillary fissure. And here even we can see that deep to the trigopalatine fossa, there is the nasal cavity and the opening between them is called the sphenopalatine opening. We're going to see them uh, in a few minutes. So the trichopalatine fossa is a pyramidal space but lies upside down. Its medial wall is made by the palatine bone, the one colored blue here. It is closed inferiorly by part of the palatine bone called the pyramidal process. Anteriorly, the purple bone here is the back of the maxilla. And posteriorly, we have the root of the trigoid process and the trigoid process is part of the uh, greater wing of sphenoid. Superiorly, the roof of the trigopalatine fossa is made by the sphenoid bone. Laterally, the trigopalatine fossa opens into the infratemporal fossa through this fissure which is called trigomaxillary fissure. So this is the fissure between the maxilla and the trigoid process, so it's called a trigomaxillary fissure. What are the contents of the trigopalatine fossa and why it is important to study? Because it contains the maxillary nerve or the second division of the trigeminal nerve and its branches. Also, it contains the largest autonomic ganglia of the head and neck, which is called the trigopalatine or sphenopalatine ganglia and also with its branches. And also it contains the third part of the maxillary artery and its branches. What about the connections of the trigopalatine fossa to the surrounding structures? The trigopalatine fossa, again, as we can see here, this is the trigopalatine fossa. It looks like an inverted pyramid. So again, it has anterior wall made of the maxilla, posterior wall made by the trigoid process, medial wall here made by the palatine bone and its lateral wall is open by the trigomaxillary fissure. Basically the trigopalatine fossa has like eight openings and through these openings many important structures can get into the trigopalatine fossa or leave it. On the medial wall of the trigopalatine fossa we have the sphenopalatine foramen, the sphenopalatine foramen which leads to the nasal cavity. In the posterior wall of the trigopalatine fossa, we have three openings. We can see here only two. We have the foramen rotundum, which communicates the trigopalatine fossa to the middle cranial fossa. 
we have the pterygoid or median canal which communicates the trigopalatine fossa to the base of the skull and we have the pharyngeal canal which communicates the trigopalatine fossa to the nasopharynx. Antrum superiorly we have the ethereal orbital fissure which communicates the trigopalatine fossa to the orbit. Laterally, as I said before, we have the trigomaxillary fissure which communicates the trigopalatine fossa to the infratemporal fossa. Also below, we have the palatine canal which is split into greater palatine canal and lesser palatine canal. The greater palatine canal leads to the hard palate while the lesser palatine canal leads to the soft palate. This is another view of the trigopalatine fossa and its connections. We have here on the medial wall the sphenopalatine foramen which opens into the nasal cavity. Posteriorly, we have three foramina, foramen rotundum to the middle cranial fossa, pharyngeal canal to the nasopharynx and the pterygoid canal into the base of the skull. Anthrosuperiorly, we have the interior orbital fissure which leads to the orbit. Below, we have the palatine canal which is split into greater palatine canal and lesser palatine canal. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload another video.